That's one of my favorite pictures. Yeah, how old was? 15. 15. Oh, yeah. yeah. This was just classic Kayla that's Xavier that, right that's, there. That's that cool. was the, the energy that drew you to her. Um, and I just want to note for the record that once again, that is my shirt. <laughs> that is my belt. And uh, she looks fierce in it. If Kayla were here right now, she'd say, that's not your shirt. <laughs> exactly. I didn't hide it well enough. <laughs> you didn't hide it well enough. That's all. Yeah. She was the life of the party. When Kayla came, the party started. And she had friends. She took care of her friends. That's why they gravitated to her. She had resettled in a, in a Section 8 apartment here in Berkeley and was trying to stay stable. And Dad was checking in regularly. And, you know, no matter what was happening in her life, good or bad, or things that we'd find embarrassing, she always called her dad and always confided. We heard about a case in the newspaper where a man had had died in police custody. That was what it said in the newspapers. A man died in police custody last night. There's usually been something uh, very tortured that has happened that leads up to that moment. They make it sound like it's something peaceful. <laughs> she was killed on February 12, 2013. Dad had dropped her off at the building and she was going to make dinner for her friends. Later on that night, I guess, she had an argument with one of the roommates. Um, it was a longtime partner um, that they've known each other for about 15 years. He was concerned because Kayla was off her medication and she was actively psychotic, meaning that she, she was talking gibberish and in her own world, but she wasn't a danger she, to herself or anyone else. She just needed a medical evaluation. So the roommate called um, the emergency line and said, you know, can you please send someone out for a 5150? The Berkeley police responded. The Berkeley mental health system, they have their own mental health unit, but it closes down at 10 o'clock at night. It's mobile crisis. Mo mobile crisis. <clears throat> and at 10 o'clock at night is when crises begin. The lead officer at the time, Officer Gwendolyn Brown, decided to run a warrant check on the person who called to get Kayla help. The person who called actually did have an active warrant in San Francisco. They um, put him in the police car and arrested him. They then ran the warrant on Kayla and there came back a, a Xavier Christopher Moore, but a different date of birth, about 20 years older than Kayla. The warrant wasn't valid and the officer knew that. She decided she was going to arrest Kayla regardless. There was no talking or trying to engage in someone who was in crisis. She basically told Kayla, we're going to arrest you, you come with me. And of course, Kayla knew that that wasn't the case. And in her mind, being, you know, schizophrenic, she wanted to confirm this with the FBI. And she pulled back and they both fell back into the room and that's when the struggle ensued. And eventually six officers came as backup pinned her down on her stomach. This is a 350 pound person lying face down with six people on her stomach. Um, they managed to get her cuffed and at some point they realized that she had stopped breathing. Eventually the ambulance did arrive and they put her on the gurney and you know at the time Kayla was wearing a little muumuu, a little sarong and you know that it came off during the struggle. Not one officer covered her up. They, they, wheeled her out to the public like that with no dignity. So, you know, it, eventually the, the coroner um, at Alta Bates Hospital called my dad and dad came down and of course got the news no parent wants to hear. Kayla was a big girl and I thought, well, maybe she just had a heart attack. But after reading the police report when we finally got it and seeing what really happened, um, you know, they killed her. Every time I take a bath, every single morning when I go to work, I start crying and I keep hearing this doctor saying I can't get a pulse every day. Afterwards, he went in intensive care from the stress. We thought it was going to kill him. Um, Maria still wakes up at night uh, screaming. And um, not every night anymore, but you know, a lot. She, she has a uh, she has nightmares. It took months, at least uh, about five months, to get the police report and the coroner's report back. But we had to beg for it. We had to protest. We had to disrupt city council meetings. You know, you have the, the death of a loved one. 
and then you have the, the attempted cover-up and the disrespect and the lack of compassion, the outright lies from the upper echelon of the Berkeley city government. At the intersections of gender, sexuality, gentrification, the social services around mental health, not just a you know, state and budget crisis, they have purposefully been uh, you know, uh, reallocated uh, in ways that support militarization rather than care. That leads to violence that disproportionately and increasingly targets particular people in particular ways. You know, if the person is laying in the street with a knife in them, they say, oh, this person is sick. This person needs medical attention. We want to see that the police are no longer in charge of mental health calls. Because when you have the police coming out on a mental health call, you, you create a criminal situation. The person will always be approached as a criminal. When they arrive there, the person that they confront is Kayla Moore and not a, uh, maybe a Berkeley student who might be having a breakdown. They called her it so many times, I don't know how many times they called her it. But they weren't, uh, they, were, they were not prepared to help. And the police don't know how to deal with anybody that's going through a mental health crisis. When a person needs mental help, you don't send Rambo in because Rambo doesn't know what to do. Rambo just throws you on the ground and suffocates you. Rambo fights. Rambo fights. He's, that's what he's trained to do. These six officers, what were they trained to do? 